Well, hi, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me in my shop here. It's Wednesday, August 16th. And it's a beautiful sunny day outside today for us here. It's going to be 28 degrees or something, which is warm, but not too hot. Fantastic. We're having a great summer here with maybe just a little bit of extra rain or just a wee bit too much rain, but uh, not today. So what to do with this radio. So the radio's performance remains uh, less than mediocre. Uh, it's picking up only one station. It's been pretty consistent in that respect right from the start. Kind of picking up one station. The one station is the strongest broadcast AM station here in my area. Coming up from Toronto, I believe is where the transmitter is located, but I'm not really sure. So what to do? Uh, can't be the tubes, I tested those. Can't be the IF, I uh, checked that, I actually peaked it just a wee bit. Uh, there still is some alignment issues I have not uh, attempted to deal with. Probably these two adjustments here, maybe some more I haven't discovered yet. <clears throat> so there, there is some possibility that alignment is still playing a role in the weakness of the radio, but can't be much of a role at this point. So what else is making this radio weak? Well, it, it could be something wrong with the antenna. I, I don't think that's the case, and I'm, I'm not about to pursue that, but that could always be possible. I mean, something, something, some wire has come off or something, and I haven't noticed it. But what is much more likely uh, is uh, some of these old capacitors are dragging down the performance of the radio, and they need to be gotten rid of. Still quite a few in here. Looks like uh, one, two, three, four, Five. There's probably another one hidden somewhere. Five more to go. So why don't we turn attention now to trying to find one of these remaining capacitors as being the cause of the weakness. So what are these capacitors all doing in here? I don't know offhand, of course. You know, look at the, why don't we look at the schematic? And we these are all going to be 0 0.02, 0 0.05, something like that. They should stand out on the schematic and uh, we can look at them and pick pick one from the schematic, find it in here, change it, and see if that uh, presto makes the radio work. So let's jump over to the schematic. You know that, that saying you've probably heard during your life, don't believe everything you hear. Okay, so that's probably true with what I'm about to say about this radio. So uh, put on your thinking cap, get your grains of salt handy, and uh, here we go. Who of these capacitors, this this one, this one, this one, who of these guys, this one, oh, I didn't change this one yet. And I did, yes, I changed, well, I changed this one or this one yesterday. I can't remember which one it was. Did I change, I should change the other one right off the bat. Which one did I change? I changed the one that's attached to, I changed this one. So that, that leaves this guy. Why don't we do this guy first? Um, look, it's associated with the antenna in some way. It looks to me like it's providing a ground. That's what I determined here. This was providing a ground back to the B minus up here through this capacitor. Kind of a circuitous route, but then that's what these are. These are circuits. So yeah, let's do this one. Maybe if this isn't working well, then the antenna doesn't get a good ground. This coil doesn't get a good a good grounding back to the B minus, and the result is weak a weak signal. Well, that makes sense. I don't know if it's true. <laughs> makes sense to me. Okay, let's go after this one first. I already know where it is. It's sitting right here. Now I want to verify that before I jump in here. Um, it's hooked up to this pin here. And that would be pin number... Hey, I didn't turn the lights up today. That would be pin number... Pin, pin number 8. That's, the, that's pin number 8 there. 8 on the rectifier tube. Pin number 8 on the rectifier tube. Hmm. Not, have I been here before? 35Z4. Pin number 8 is a cathode. That's definitely where 
starts going. And the other, the other end of it is going over to pin number one, two, three on the 50L6. What? It's coffee break time already. Holy smokes. 50L6 pin number three. 50L6 pin number one, two, three is the plate. From the plate 50L6. Okay, that beeping will stop in just a moment here. Stop right now. Okay, 50L6. Cathode is here. There's the 0 0.02. Well, it shows it the plate here, but probably uh, this wire. Ooh, ooh. Not really. Well, did I trace it wrong? How could it be connected the way it's connected? So I'm just looking at it again. Um. Hmm. Let's go back and look at that radio again. So it's this capacitor on this pin. Oh, I think I count it. Did I count it wrong? One, two, three. No. Third plate of the 50L6. So it should be between the plate and, didn't I see it, as the cathode of the 50L6? Cathodes are all... Well, they aren't grounded in here. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm giving you partial uh, statements here, but I'm so there's there's no doubt it connects here. This connection goes right to one of the positive terminals on the filter capacitor. Uh, where's it going through the speaker transformer? So there's a green. Oh, they're hidden. They're hidden back here. There. Trying to see if the connections to the uh, output transformer. <clears throat> no, 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 that's not helping at all. I don't get it. So, so this side makes sense. This one over here. There's another wire. I didn't see it. Guess what? It comes right back over to this radio. This set too. So I think that's what they've done. The capacitor is big enough. It cannot fit comfortably across here. So they found a way to connect it down into here. Where it did fit properly. Or comfortably. Okay. That's the guy. That's the guy. And uh, I will change him out. Okay, the capacitor is in now. And I think we're ready for another test of this guy here. But first, let's test the capacitor I took out. See what we removed here. watch me use this machine. I'm not going to explain it. just going to do it. There we go. 50 volts. Uh, it's not quite open all the way. It's not going to open at all on 150. Partially open at 50 volts. So it's leaky. Um, I think this one's in a critical position where a uh, a leak, I think, 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to, once again, <laughs> get your grain of salt ready here. Um, it seems to be associated with the uh, antenna coil at the front of the radio. Could be the case that with the capacitor developing a resistance inside of it, that resistance is pulling the Q down on this coil at the front of the radio. Is it true? I don't know. I don't know. Let's find out if the radio is better. Okay, switch is on, power on, watching those dim bulbs. I've been in there fooling around. Okay, all is normal. Now, you know, I have this plugged into an isolation transformer. It's not plugged into a regular outlet. Sometimes these old radios came with instructions that if you plug them in and they didn't work well, you should pull the plug out, reverse it, and plug it back in. We can try that. We, we, we can try these things. We should try these things. But first, let's see what we got. What do we got here? Same thing, one station. Hey, where'd it go? It seemed to me to be exactly the same performance. Let's try it in a real outlet now. So currently we're operating it with 114 volts. Okay, in an isolated circuit from the power system ground. Now I'm going to plug this in. This is non-polarized, so I'm just going to plug it in any old way here. Here we go. Okay, and now power on. Okay, now we're going to go hunting. It's the same. I reverse the plug now. Sounds exactly the same. Another station. So I had the radio on this angle. Okay, let's leave it like this. Reverse the experiment. Okay. Reversing the plug. going into the isolated. Well, that's interesting. Back into the outlet. All right, tune the radio just a bit. Try 
at some other stations. Reversing the plug in a regular outlet. Going into the isolated outlet. Well, that's pretty interesting. Uh, That's very interesting. Let's go back in a regular outlet. This regular outlet is a power bar and a power bar and a power bar in an outlet. <laughs> so it's not so regular. Let's go find that French station. There it is. Okay, so we're in the regular outlet. Let's let's go from the regular outlet into the isolated. Still here. Huh. Okay. It is just above the eight. It's actually 860, but on the dial here it looks like about 820. This is also low over here, so the whole the whole the whole dial is shifted from uh, bad alignment. Okay, okay, that's in some ways that's a little disappointing. I didn't discover this earlier because as we've been comparing the ability of the radio to receive, it's been in a situation where it can't receive well simply because of the antenna angle. And look at this, this radio a few degrees is making a significant difference. Okay, but uh, so did, did that particular capacitor improve things? I don't think so, uh, but I can't be sure now. Because as usual, my scientific test has failed to be scientific. <laughs> That's almost always what happens when I try to do something, you know, either quantitative or like that. Uh, usually it doesn't work out. Okay, well, there's more capacitors to change in here. Just pull that out. Uh, it's an interesting question about plugging it in a regular outlet versus using the uh, isolation transformer. The, the idea of that is the isolation transformer has no ground reference. There, there's, there's just nothing grounded about it. Whereas a regular outlet, one side is connected to the power system neutral, which is also connected to earth in many places, in many, many places. In a multi-grounded system in my house, the hydro neutral is connected to a water pipe via a bond wire. It's about 10 feet long or so <clears throat> from the fuse panel over into the, uh, to the cold water pipe. And there's one of those in every house and uh, all over the place. So, so the radio can find its way to earth through the power system, I think. That's what we're experiencing here, a variation in the uh, grounding. Um, you could think of it this way too. Let's say you want to move something, and you're standing on. Uh, let's say you're standing on ice, and and, and you want to. Uh, you have a container in front of you that you want to rotate, like like this. So you grab it with one hand. I mean, there's a handle on this heavy, heavy thing. When you go to rotate it because you're standing on ice, you move back. Now you can't see me, I'm moving back. <laughs> I'm holding my arm out farther and farther. So, you know, equal and opposite reaction sort of thing. 
So it becomes very hard for you to turn this thing while you're standing on this slippery ground. So rather than be smart and stand on more solid ground, another option is to bring your other hand out, grab the other side of the object, and now do this. Now while you're doing this now, it doesn't matter much what kind of ground you're standing on. I, I suppose it would still matter a bit. Maybe, would, maybe my example's not the best. So let's go back to the antenna now. So the first example is the antenna. An antenna, this is a loop antenna, so this example doesn't work well. Oh my gosh, I'm really off from the woods here. But let's suppose it's short wave and it's a wire antenna. And you've got this radio and it's not grounded in any way. It's plugged into an isolation transformer. Or maybe it's running on batteries. And an even, even bigger example of this, running on batteries. So it's like the one-handed thing. So when you apply a ground, it's a little like the second hand has come in and now the radio's doing this, or I like to show it this way. Like a loop antenna does this, right? It has two wires coming from it and it's doing this. Whereas, you know, your wire antenna is doing this. <laughs> there you are. Well, that explains it perfectly. So I'm gonna stop for a minute and uh, then we'll, we'll pick another capacitor, try another one, pick another one. Okay, let's hunt down another interesting capacitor. Um, well, we got a, we got we got this one. Uh, this guy's job, as I understand it, is between the cathode and the plate on the output tube, is to uh, settle down the possibility of oscillations, or uh, lessen the possibility of oscillations, and get rid of any RF that may have made it this far. That, that's my understanding of it. Once again, I could be completely wrong. Could could this guy cause a weakening in reception? I don't think so. It's way, it's way, out, it's way out the wrong end of the radio. Uh, we've changed that one already early on. We changed this one early on. So we have a capacitor here. It's going to the chassis that's involved in grounding the shield of the tubes here. Could this cause something? Um, so this would be in the realm of oscillations and weird effects and uh, stuff like that. Uh, this is probably fine. Even if this were somewhat weakened, uh, some amount of resistance in it, I think it would probably still be doing the job well enough. Can't be responsible for weak reception. So, you know, here's a, now here's another, another situation, shield here and ground. So it's a, it's the metal can on this tube that's grounded to the chassis, uh, not to the B minus. So uh, again, this is a direct connection. Uh, it's bound to be there. Th there's, it, this just can't be can't be part of the picture. There's no capacitor anyway. I'm looking for capacitors. Weak capacitors. We're looking for the big ones. And there are some small ones here that if they were weak or in trouble, yeah, you could do something, but let's not go there just yet. So there, 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 and there's, uh, so I, I've done this guy. Um, maybe we'll go after this one next, because I don't know what else to do, really. This guy, and, and these other ones, we don't really, I don't really care about this one too much. Okay, let's do this guy. Let's get rid of this one. I can't imagine it's going to help the performance of the radio, but then I never know. Okay, so it's between the cathode and the plate. Why, why do I think I just did this one? I'm all confused here. Okay, let, let me stop and, and deconfuse myself. Okay, I'm going to try something that's a little bit of a stretch here, and that is to determine the strength of the local oscillator in the radio. If the local oscillator is weak, the radio's performance will be weak also. Normally, the local oscillator is very strong and is easily picked up by a coil like this, just a, just a bundled up clip lead. And this is leading over to a little SDR radio, which is sitting right, right here, and $50 SDR radio. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to pick up the local oscillator signal with this coil, look at the strength of it. I've done this with enough radios. I have some notion as to what to expect. And uh, we're going to look at the, I'll put the SDR on the screen in, in just a second. And what I'm going to be doing with this is just kind of waving it around like this, looking for this stronger area 
and then assessing what I see on the screen. Is it strong or not? My guess is local oscillators are normal strength and this test won't prove anything, but let's give it a go. Okay, so here's the SDR screen. Okay, it looks, looks a little looks a little funny, kind of shaky. I've just barely got the this SDK going. Let's just move it a little further. That looks a little funny, doesn't it? That doesn't look right. Um, now, this doesn't look right. Let me put my hand on the, yeah, you know what? I put my hand on the antenna, it's doing nothing. So my, my radio is bonkers here. Radio must be bonkers. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect the radio entirely from the computer and I'll plug it back in. You might have heard the ding dong ding. Now we're going to attempt to reconnect this. There we are. That's a little better. Okay, put the SDK back here. So I don't know what was going on there. Something weird. I guess I leave my, uh, okay, not to worry about it. It's working now. So the radio is tuned to, let me tune it to 700 as best I can figure out. So that would put the local oscillator uh, 450 below that, 250. So, uh, no, about, above that, duh. Let's try that again, 700 plus 450, 1150. 1150 so we should find a local oscillator up in this area here all the radio's not on all these signals are just stuff i'm going to put my hand on that antenna loop there you can see the difference there on the hand glance. so it's working okay so keeping an eye on this display and we'll apply the power to the radio here uh, oh you know what i have to it's, it's important. I plug the radio in. I had to plug the radio in. Okay, here we go again. We're plugging in the radio. Away she goes. I'm going to have the coil just sitting near it. Watch what happens here. Let me turn the volume up. Okay, so I'm filling with the volume here too, but. So what we see there is this huge signal right around where I said it should, should appear. I'll tune the radio a little bit. You'll see it move around. Okay, we have a station there. The dial says it's 620, but we know that this is probably 590. Now, if we just read this frequency, we'll just do something else here. Now, incidentally, the local oscillator is super strong. This is super strong, so there is no problem with the local oscillator strength in this radio. So we have 1075. Yeah, ten, okay, so 1070. Let's say 1070. Well, 1075 might be easier to do the arithmetic. We want to subtract away. Oh my gosh. You know what? I can't get, I'm not even going to do this. Let me do this with a calculator. <laughs> 1075. How sad is that, eh? Minus 455. 620. The radio is tuned to 620. So what this might suggest is the IF is not tuned to 455, but tuned to maybe 445 or, or some wrong frequency. And that, that can also, you know, if it, unless the alignment is completely done, there can be a significant degradation in a, the radio's operation. I wonder if I should do a full alignment, a more serious alignment attempt at this point. That's a good question, because the uh, capacitors that remain just, just aren't, that, aren't that exciting. So that's where the coil was the whole time. I never moved it. And it was picking up a very strong local oscillator signal. Now you could do this with any radio. You just take a regular AM radio and make sure make sure the one you're interested in is tuned low. Puts the local oscillator in the band. And you just take another AM radio and, and tune for it. 
again, it's not exactly a quantitative measurement, but you'd know if it's there or not. Because most of these radios are blasting out local oscillator signal. Wow, that antenna is... Probably in this position, I am pointing the null of the antenna at the uh, transmitter. And so that would mean this way would be the maximum, 90 degrees. Or, or this way, same thing. Okay, uh, I, am, I am aimless at this point, aimless. Let's turn off the power before I stick my finger in the radio by accident. Uh, I see this is sort of the front end of the radio here, this coil. I see a capacitor connected right to it. Or and, and here, here, just a pair of wire it suggests it's a ground terminal. But let's look at these. Let's look at the location of these two uh, diodes or diodes, trimmer capacitors, and see what we can see. So one trimmer is here, and the other one is here. This one is trimming. Well, I have to guess. It's trimming the. Uh, hey, there's another one. On, wait a minute. There's one on the back of the antenna itself. There's one that's mounted right on the antenna. That's probably this one. That'd be one, two, three. And that's what it, that's what's in this radio. So is there any, there's no hint. I have no hint of who's who. But you can pretty much guess that uh, the two on the side are both trimming the local oscillator, one for broadcast and one for short wave. And this is trimming the antenna. And this is mounted right on the antenna. It's connected to the switch, eh? And the other side, this whole, wow, I don't know, this is, there's, there's another capacitor out there, is, is there, on this antenna? Oh. There kind of is. They're kind of coming coming off what I think is this. It's, it's this. Okay. Um, so trimming the local oscillator move the... Uh, how can I put this? On, on AM, it's fairly critical to get the antenna tuned properly. But this... Is this trimming when where to go? This is not a fair this is the variables. This oh this is six A, I'm all mixed up. Okay, ignore everything I just said. I've got to start over. Okay, starting over. So that's a trimmer, a single trimmer. What are they doing here? They have six A written and this is gonna straight plate symbol. Yeah, the straight plate symbol here, but they've written six B over there. They've given this thing a number. Number eight. Shouldn't this six B be sitting here? And some number like eight be sitting here? Uh, sometimes these trimmers are right on the capacitor frame, but in this radio, they have chosen not to use those unless unless it's on the back side here. I'm just taking a look at the radio. So, you know, it has the fittings for a capacitor, but no screws. Wait a minute. Wait a minute here. Oh, one of them does have a screw. One has a screw. 
Okay, that's an oscillator adjustment. Okay, so we have one on the capacitor. That's got to be this guy here. This guy, this guy here. And they, they just labeled the whole thing 6B. They didn't give this guy an independent label. Okay, uh, so, so that's on the capacitor. That's on the antenna. There's two two more adjustments. Well, there are two more trimmers. What, what am I missing here? Uh, How is this working? Uh, you know, these are adjustable. So, and often they put an arrow on here to indicate things are adjustable. Like this one has no arrow. That must be what they're doing here. So. These are the adjustable ones on the top of the IF cans. So this becomes a trimmer. This becomes the tuning capacitor. This tuning capacitor, this is the trimmer. Okay, now if I count them up. There's the one on the antenna then. So this one has the arrow. So one, two, three, four. How do you like that? Okay, broke through confusion here on reading this schematic. Now we got four, and I've identified four trimmers. I found one I didn't even know existed on right on the tuning capacitor. Okay, I really need to find the instructions on the alignment. This is not something you really want to wing totally. Probably could wing your way through this, but I think it'd be better to get the actual instructions before I do it anymore. Yeah, we'll, we'll try aligning this radio with the way it is now. So now we're looking at the alignment instructions here, and uh, hey, look at this over here. We got some interesting information I was not making any use of before. Instruction data. So here it's showing the different voltages on the different pins of each of the tubes. This is very handy information, and it wouldn't hurt to go around through every tube and check these voltages out against this chart before going much further. Uh, let's see what the notes are. These are bottom views of the sockets. That's good. Measure the voltages from socket lugs to the B minus. They give you a, plane, a, a spot where you can pick it up. Pin 3 on the 12 SK7. These voltages measured using a 20,000 ohms per volt voltmeter. That's a fairly good voltmeter. 1,000 ohms per volt for AC. That's typical for AC measurements. This is not a very good voltmeter. In other words, the voltmeter will load down the uh, circuit. So you still get a reading. And you, if you use the same meter, you can compare the reading to the reading that's on the chart here if you use the same quality of meter. Uh, wiring junction. So here they're talking about, like at this location, they're pointing out that this uh, pin is not used in the tube. So it's available for making connections. And thank you for doing that. That's very helpful. Too bad I didn't see it earlier. No connection. Tube. Socket voltage tolerance. 10%. Socket voltage tolerance. Socket voltage chart. I would call this a tube pin chart myself. Socket voltage. OK. Uh, or tube socket voltage chart. OK, don't be too picky, Jim. Come on. Great. Um, I think I'm going to avail myself of this information and run through these tests and see, see what we find out before doing any more to the radio. Okay, I think I'm ready to go. It took me a long time to get this so you can read the front panel to some degree because the uh, lighting in my shop is such that something like that can get, just get washed right out. So operating in a little bit of darkness. Okay. We don't have to listen to it at all. I put it up just a wee bit. Helps keep me mindful that it's operating. The supply voltage 114. That's 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 okay. Now this is giving not only DC voltages, also giving AC voltages for the heater and, and whatnot. Now the heaters are in series and if one tube heater has gone wild like it's got a short in it or something like that to throw the voltages off. 
and that's why they've got them listed here. You can go through and read these voltage. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go after the DC voltages. Uh, I'll put it on 300 to start. 300 scale. I'm reading to the B minus here. And we're going to start with 50L6 tube. Now they've got this diagram arranged just like the tubes are. Everything is just just like it really is. So should be fairly easy to go in here. Cathode should read 6.5 volts. Positive. Cathode is just before. Look at the little tiny spot there that shows where the key is. It's very hard to spot on the diagram. So that's pin 8. That all makes sense. Pin 8 is right here. And we want to see on there 6.5 volts. So we're way off. 10 volt scale. Okay, just double check what I'm touching. So that's seven, we're reading 7.5 volts on here. Sounds sounds pretty good to me. Okay, next. That's the bias, uh, the actual grid bias we just read. Skip the next one, then a heater. Plate is up here. Plate will be here. And one there, we want to see 115 volts. And so I'm on the 300 scale, 100, that's roughly 115, because that, that would be 150 there. So it's 100, so it's, yeah. Looks like, it, if anything, it's a touch high. Okay, then right beside it is, it should have the same voltage, is the uh, screen grid. So it's a little lower. I'm writing the screen at 100 volts with the plate at 115, but on here they're both showing as 115. It's not much of a difference. That's really it for this tube. You're going to find either one high voltage on a tube, maybe two if there's a screen. Okay, okay so screen here, interesting. A rectifier, these are probably all AC voltages here. I can stay away from them. Go to the next tube. And it gives, looks like 55 volts on the plate. That's 12 with an asterisk. Asterisk. 25, 60 cycle AC voltage. Yeah, it's on the heater. I, I don't want to measure that. So we're looking for one measurement on this tube. On the plate, that would be this pin here. Maybe not. Wouldn't it be that one? should be one, two, three back from the key. One, two, this would be three back here. Okay, so now on the 300 volt scale, we're reading about just about 55, 55 volts on it, and, and that is what it's supposed to be, 55. That's amazing. Okay, next tube. We're looking at, I mean, let's start here with the plate. That's this tube here. Find the key, find the plate. Very, oh, this isn't quite the same angle as they show it here. plate would be, oh, it's a little tricky to get to it, boom, how come the radio went quiet, just because I'm touching the plate, so we're getting now about 90 volts, here, this one, 87, 87 volts, so that's good, heater, here's G2, this is a screen, 95, this should be a higher voltage. Okay, 95 volts on the screen. Would this be the screen here? I don't think so. I think it's the next one over. This would be the screen. There we go. So we're just under 100 volts. So there we are. 
Oddly enough, the plate is a little bit lower than the screen, the way they have this operating. Now we go to the last tube and find a plate and a screen. The plate, it's so hard to read, looks like 86. Plate straight up. Oh, this tube's just covered with parts. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, find the key. Oh, my gosh. I can't see anything in that. I have lost my little flashlight. I haven't lost it. I've taken it somewhere. So we're going to hit it with a big light here. Trying to spot the little key on the that on the center. I can't see it. We can see it. Okay, we're gonna play a, guess, play a guessing game here for a bit. Um, cannot see where the key is. It's supposed to be right, right visible. But I just can't see. I can't see. So we will go. That's a heater plate. It's supposed to be straight up. So that, that would be this one here. Kill the radio. Okay, and that's just under a hundred volts there. Just under a hundred volts, and this looks like eighty-five or something like that. And then again, to show the screen at a higher voltage, the next pin over. The next pin over, I think, is this. That's just slightly higher. It's right on the one volt. I know you can't. Well, yeah. Depends where my hand goes. What's that camera doing? So, what that test says is all these tubes have their proper high voltages, and there's not much to be concerned about in terms of that. Okay, and you know why? I was outside briefly uh, between little sessions in here and it's just beautiful outside. What am I doing in here? I'm gonna call it quits at this point for today so I can go outside. And fantastic. So all in all, not bad. Uh, still have low performance. Maybe tomorrow I'll start off with a more serious alignment, even though I still have some old capacitors in there. I have the feeling most of these are having no effect on the performance of the radio. So that's what we should do. Turn that off right on. Okay, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, see you tomorrow.